Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome back to another session of the 99 names of Allah. And today is session 27. So we are going to be going through the 80s and then tomorrow inshallah will be in the 90s. Sounds like a CNN program covering the decades, but alhamdulillah, we are, uh, we are on our way to uh, the completing the 99 names uh, by this Wednesday. So inshallah, uh, just a few more sessions left. But last time we covered the divine names, three divine names, Ar-Ra'uf, Malikul Mulk, and Dhul Jalali Wal Ikram. Ar-Ra'uf was the kind, the gentle, the tolerant, the mild, the friendly, and a very warm name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Malikul Mulk was the owner of the dominion. So it tells us that everything that is, everything that was, everything that will be, comes under the dominion of Allah, and that we are all in this dominion together equal and only Allah is above all in the sense. And lastly is Dhul Jalali wa Likram, the possessor of majesty and generosity that Allah, despite being at that level, despite being there is still paired as the most generous, is still closer to the, the creation than their own jugular veins. And so you, you see how despite the magnanimity that Allah is, the closeness that Allah also is. And so it's a beautiful pairing. Today, inshallah, we are going to go into the uh, to four names, actually, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, the four names that we'll be covering today are Al-Muqsit, Al-Jami', Al-Ghani, and Al-Mughni. So keep an eye out for those in the, in the, uh, in the slideshow. I, I believe it is uh, numbers... 86, 87, 88, and 89 um, for these names. And then, uh, yes, we'll go ahead and begin with the Asma'il Husna. We'll do the Asma'il Husna, and then we will jump into these names. So, Bismillah, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to share my screen, and we'll go ahead and get started from there. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Who Allah Ladi La Ilaha Ilahu Ar Rahman Ar Rahim Al Malik Al Qudus Al Salam Al Mu'min Al Muhaymin Al Aziz Al Jabbar المتكبر الخالق الباري المصور الغفار القهار الوهاب الرزاق الفتح العليم القابض الباسط الخافض الرافع المعز المذل السميع البصير الهاكم العدل اللطيف الخبير الهليم العظيم الغفور الشكور العلي الكبير الهفيد المقيد الهسيب الجليل الكريم الرقيب المجيب الواصع الهكيم الودود المجيد الباعث الشهيد الحق الوقيل القوي المتين الولي الهميد المهسي مبدي المعيد المهي المميت الهي القيوم الواجد الماجد الواحد الأحد الصمد القادر المقتدر المقدم المؤخر الأول الآخر الظاهر الباطن الوالي المتعالي البر التواب المنتقيم العفو الرؤوف مالك الملك ذو الجلال والإكرام المقصد الجامع الغني المغني المانع الضار نافع النور 
هادي البديع الباقي الورث الرشيد الصبور. So we begin with these divine names, and inshallah, we these are starting to catch on in some way, shape, or form, or becoming familiar. Like I said, doesn't have to be memorized or anything, but they become familiar, and we use that as a source of benefit, inshallah. So as we go into today's names, we begin with Al Muqsid. Al Muqsid, as I mentioned, is the righteous, the impartial, the one who judges impartially, the equitable. And the root of this name has the meanings of distribution, of acting justly, of distributing in fair quantities, to act in fairness, acting equitably, doing right, having uh, fair mindedness, and having correctness. And so Al Muqsid is the one who allocates to everyone and every creation what has been prescribed and it's done on a just manner. Now this might seem kind of odd because although we, we see in our world that that clearly isn't the case for some folks, like in certain, so we've all been given life, but there's many folks even as soon as they're born whom don't have, who don't have a specific measure, you know, to that can be compared to or other folks' lives that are cut off short or other things that are happening. So in this world, we see just a such a disparity and, and not just in the sense of life, but in the sense of possessions and income and all these different things. But uh, Al-Muqsid reassures us that although the shares aren't necessarily equal, they have to be because all, they have to be fair because Allah only gives fairly. And so when we think about this, it requires us to walk back what we, what we have constructed and understood as our concept of justice, what we understand as our concept in this world as what is being just and what is being unjust. And clearly this world that has been not just uh, put forward by Allah, but then built upon and created upon uh, by humanity uh, will clearly bear marks of injustice, will clearly be, bear inherent elements of injustice. And when we try to walk some of those back and try to balance something out, uh, we, we will we'll always be teetering, but we won't really get it right. But it reminds us that the divine scale of justice, the divine scale of justice, the justice scale that Allah uses to measure things in terms of that scale is a much different scale. It's it's a much different scale. It's a, it's a much more pure scale that isn't impeded by any of this. And so on Allah's scales that measure justice, there is um, this, this fairness that is across. But in our world, which the, in which different things manifest, in which we have our own different preconceived notions and establishments of what is just, what's not, what's fair, what's not, um, in Allah's realm, in Allah's scale, uh, it's a completely different scale. So when we try to apply our values of justice, our limited scope of justice to the divine, no doubt Allah will pe appear to be as unjust. And Allah's uh, creation and different uh, aspects and things like that will appear to be unjust, but that's because we're only looking at the glass not even half full. We're looking just at it from a completely different vantage point and not seeing sort of what 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 all is really there. So this name has a significant connotation of that, but it requires us to really reflect on it, really sit with it. And so like al Adl, the name Al-Muqsit is a divine name of justice. It's, it's different though, because it brings to the forefront balance, impartiality, equality, and fair measurement. And so we note that when, uh, when, when, life doesn't treat us fairly, when we don't get a fair shake, when something bad happens, this is a name that we can lean on. We lean on this because Al-Muqsid really helps us go deeper. It really helps us discover that wisdom of divine soundness, but it also helps in that hard work that we like to do, the hard work that expands our heart to what the divine plan might be, that uh, we, we, we can't accept any of any of what's going on, any of these 99 names or so that are around us. We can't open our eyes to those until we first open our hearts. And so we, we recognize with this name that everything has been given a share. And then Al-Muqsit is that scale, is a scale in which Allah sometimes lifts us, but also sometimes lowers us. We talked about these names uh, earlier on in the sessions, how Allah is the one who lifts, but Allah is also the one who lowers. And so both on the material and the spiritual level. But what's interesting is that Al-Muqsid opens up for us that path to the uniqueness 
of our soul, the uniqueness of our soul that enables us to see, to realize, to treasure the part that we have been given and, and to make the most of what we have been given to our capacity. Again, Allah reminds us in the Quran that no soul shall be uh, shall be burdened with the bearing of another soul, and no soul shall be uh, no soul shall be burdened beyond its capacity. In a sense that each soul is given its appropriate measure. And again, like I said, when we apply our own sense of justice, our own sense of what is right, what is wrong, to the divine, no doubt we will see these. Uh, we'll see uh, you know uh, transgressions, if you may say, uh, injustices, and all that abound. But uh, that's because we're we're projecting there. And when we don't project and when we see for what the what, what it actually is, uh, we, we gain a sense of appreciation that actually does exist there. So when we use this, uh, this name, when we connect to our true self, our true inner self, and as we use this name to really connect into our heart, we begin to realize that our true existence, our true purpose doesn't depend on these outer circumstances, doesn't depend on our materials, doesn't pretend about on what uh, the external looks like. It, it matters on what's on the inside here. And so al muqsid really reflects that beauty and majesty of our soul, our true self. And so in taking this name, we're able to not just remain just and balanced and impartial, but to do so in the most adverse and difficult situations. And we also come to, this is uh, going off of the halaqa that we had yesterday on environmental justice uh, with sister, so uh, sister Corey and Sara, um, that we also become more careful to treat all humans and all creation, and the, including the environment, including everything around us fairly. We, 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 with this name, we, when, we, when we awaken it within us, we stand up for justice in the world. We help those who need protection. We strive for truthfulness and balance, and we motivate others to do so as well. But we see a call within this name to not just be passive uh, agents, not just to be over consumers, not just to be people who are moved uh, but just by the externals and just to be uh, defined by the external and just to go with the flow. We're taught to be people that help to to be scale balancers. We will balance the scale. If we see something that uh, in Allah's book is unjust, or at least along with the creation and, and humanity and the environment, if we see someone do something wrong to humans, if we see someone do something wrong to animals or the creation, if we see someone doing something wrong to the environment, to plants, to anything like that, it is, it is a divine call for us to to be careful to take care of these things to stand up for these things and not just to stay on the side and say I'm just going to pray for him no you do what you can with uh, with your hand with your heart with your tongue you you do what you exercise as much as you can and this name lifts that up that you're not just passive agents in this world you are here um, in a divinely imbued world with divinely imbued sparks and one of them being able to balance and call out for justice and so we start this work, of course, by uh, it starts nowhere further than at home. Uh, we start by being fair to ourselves, first and foremost, before we extend it to others. And when I say being fair to ourselves, it's not like, hey, you know, you only had this much for Sahur, or you only had this much for Iftar, why don't you give yourself a little bit more? No, it's in a sense that you be fair to yourself, you, you understand that within your, um, within your capacity here, within your world that you are living in here, are you being fair to yourself? Are you being fair to the world around you? Are you being fair to other people? Are you being careful to treat other people right? Are you being careful to treat all the creation right? And are you being careful to treat your own body right? Because even if you do in excess, your body suffers. Your physical corporeal body suffers. Your physical, spiritual, mental sp uh, sp uh, spheres as well, they suffer too. So are we being fair to ourselves? So not just are we eating most as much as we can, are we doing as much as we can, are we doing all this stuff to, to, to maximize the output in life, but are we being fair to ourselves and to the world around us? And al muqsid touches these senses, touches this mindset and really transforms it into different concepts, different agents of justice, different bringers of justice. It gives us that strength and courage to grow by admitting our own mistakes and how the, uh, the, the world around us has always longed for justice and how our inner sense has always longed for justice and to continue that work. And lastly, Allah loves those who are gentle, but Allah loves those who are both also accountable and responsible and take responsibility with what they've been given and with what has been 
given to them and around them, and especially with the creation. So we're not just accountable to ourselves. We're not just accountable to Allah. We're accountable to everything that is around us that will testify to us. And so uh, this was lifted up in yesterday's halaqa. I really recommend you all check it out. It's on our YouTube channel, but uh, it, it really speaks to how holistic the sense is when we are in the environment and what our what, the, what Allah lifts up about the environment in the Quran, what the Prophet Sallallahu lifts up about the environment uh, in, the, uh, in the hadith, but also what our responsibility is. And this name touches on this responsibility that when we walk the earth, we walk humbly, we walk gently, we walk mindfully. That mindfulness is not just something in Ramadan that starts on the first and ends on the 30th. Mindfulness about all these things, all these things that are there, is, is, is something that is inherent to us. So let us, inshallah, make an intention that our mindfulness goes beyond this Ramadan and is, is kept there, but not just for our prayer times, not just for how much we eat, but what all in the world around us is wrong or what, what is uh, not supposed to be the way it is and help us to be those to help balance those scales, inshallah. So we go to the next name, al Jami. Al Jami is the one who gathers, the all embracing, the one who brings together the uniter. And uh, Al Jami brings together all of those which, uh, which are similar, all those which are different, brings uh, those which, are, which belong together and those that don't belong together. And the purpose of these names that we've been going through, these divine names, it's not just a sense of establishing who, what or who Allah is and all the divine attributes that are there but also to find healing, to find unity in them. Each of these names we've gone through, we've said that it comes from the same source. And if the names are coming from the same source, the names which created this creation that we are in, they come from the same source. It, it helps us to realize that, that unity that's there. And the roots of this name go off of that same meaning, in a sense, to gather, to collect, to unite, to combine, to sum up, to pile up, to pull together, uh, and to join, to conjoin. And so it gives us the ability to unite, not just ourselves with the world around us, but our inner and our outer worlds. It gives space for the unity that we have, uh, that we should experience between both our feelings and our thoughts, as well as our actions. On the outside, it, it helps bring people together. It helps bring different people together as well as different creation. So we uh, live into this uh, kind of a beloved community, but we also, going off of that same thought if you look if you just take as an example the environment in a sense that you 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 feel brought together with this that you are no longer as, you are no longer just humans and distinguished and above everything else and there are some plants or a field or whatnot there's not it's it, there, it's not an accident that uh, we i think we mentioned this in the first session or so it's not an accident that you share uh, over 95 or 90 percent of your dna with a strawberry like you know you are connected inherently to the earth and so it gives us a uh, sense that we are united but we sometimes have to dig deeper to to, to find that and so when we look at this name, oftentimes it's referring to humans being gathered on the day of judgment, that Allah will gather us together, gather everybody together. But we realize that we are really gathered before that. We're gathered in our own lives in these meaningful encounters. But how many times have we maybe have met somebody or met something or been in a place just gathered with other creation? And it's really just a special moment, but we, we don't realize it in that moment until it's gone. And so this name makes us reflect on what that gathering is like, that yes, inshallah, we will be gathered one day, but we'll be gathered in a way in which opposites are all together. The oppressor is with the oppressed, weak are with the powerful, the giver with the taker. And Allah will be the sole one that judges between us. But at that moment, it'll, it'll, you'll see in this gathering that we truly are all equal because no one's wealth will increase for them or do anything for them at that moment to spare them. And no one's uh, the, the opposite of anyone's poverty, anyone's lack of will not be a reason to go over another person in a sense. There, there will be a complete balance there, but Allah will judge between that in, in a sense, especially with the folks who do have, the people who have, uh, the people who were oppressing, the people who were wealthy, the people who were powerful, the people who were the takers, um, or sorry, the, the yeah, just the, the takers of all this, and and lift up why didn't they take care of the ones who are uh, less weak, less less uh, privileged and whatnot. So there's there's this balance that's there, but at that moment of gathering, everyone will be equal like the teeth of a comb. And so al-jami, as we conclude with this, helps us connect 
our similarities and our differences, not just with one another. But like I said, you connect with the world around you, connect with that strawberry, that banana, um, you connect with other creation and you see how similar you actually are. You look at your biological makeup, uh, you look at the stars and you see how similar you are to a remote comet just flying through the, uh, you know, flying through space. You see that you are connected even to the most random parts of like the universe. And so uh, it's a really beautiful thing to take in that we, we gather ourselves, not just in physical, not just in the in person, but we gather ourselves uh, spiritually and mentally in the space that we really are all together. So we see these heart connections that come to be and every being then shares in these divine sparks. Every being shares in the divine's dominion, in that mulk, because it is from Allah we came and to Allah we, we return. And Allah is the one who gathered us together. Allah is the one who will gather us together in all our differences, in all our different shapes, forms, whatever we may be. Uh, and we take solace in knowing that we all came from this one Allah. And so the next name we cover is, uh, the next two names actually will cover this concept of, uh, of richness, of, of being enriched. And so Al-Ghani is the rich, the self-sufficient, the wealthy. Allah is no doubt wealthy. Now I'm not talking about Jeff Bezos wealthy or Bill Gates wealthy. Allah's wealth has no, uh, no quantifiable measure. The uh, Allah is the source of wealth. Allah is the one who is dependent on none uh, as on no one else, but everyone else is dependent on Allah. Al Ghani is the one who owns in abundance, is the one without ties, is the one who's independent. And so it, it, it creates this mindset in us that we, when, whenever we are in need, whatever it may be, we'll talk about wealth in a second, but uh, whenever we are in need, Allah is the source to go to. Allah is that source to go to. And uh, what, what, when we talk about wealth, we're not just talking about that which you can deposit into your bank, that which you can just put um, in, in quantify and see how much you have um, or trade it or anything like that. True wealth comes from that substance, comes from that internal aspect in different areas of knowledge, in different areas of being kind, in different areas of human qualities. So there, there's so much to wealth rather than can be quantified, but there's a holistic aspect of it in spirituality, in your knowledge, in your care for others. The, you know, the, the most wealthy is, is, is to be the most grateful, is to be the most generous. And so the true beauty that is brought from gratefulness, um, from wealth and uh, from modesty is at the, and from sorry, the true beauty which is brought from, uh, from wealth really comes in that aspect of gratefulness. And at, uh, and from the service of human beings and modesty and all these things that emanate from wealth. And so when we realize that Allah alone is truly wealthy, we need only ask Allah for not just help, but go to Allah for the source of that wealth. Because if Allah is the provider, Allah is al razak Allah is the wealthy, Allah will give from that wealth. And so, like I said, that, that wealth does not have to be what we measure in our human terms as wealth. And so it shares a root with al-mughni, which we'll get to in just a second here, but to be free from want, to be free, uh, to become rich, to become wealthy, to become free of need, to be able to spare. So despite being all wealthy, Allah is still there and present for the people. We talk about how he's closer to a believer than their jugular vein and is near when people call on Allah. And so uh, when, 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 we, when we see that Allah is still present, but not only is that, Allah is an active participant in every single part of the creation's lives. Not a leaf drops, the Quran tells us. Not a leaf drops, but that Allah knows of it. And so you see how aware Allah is and perceptive of everything that's going on. And not just that, but forgiving forgiving the creation, embracing and loving the creation. How often is someone who we consider in this world, like if you think of a billionaire, you think of a millionaire, whatever it might be, someone who's wealthy by our standards, how often are they that intimately involved with each and every single one of their workers without a photo op, without wanting to come in and say, hey, look, I just donated this, but they're truly there. They know their pulses. They know um, what, they're, what they're feeling um, and they're really connected to them. I, I, I will challenge anybody to bring a specific example of that because I can't think of one off the top of my head who someone who knows every single one of the people that, that is working under them and giving them that intensive level of care. It's just unheard of, but we see 
this in Allah, in the most wealthy, giving that laser-focused care, giving that laser-focused priority and uplifting each of the creation like they feel like they're the only ones that, that are here. And so this name gives us breathing space, especially in times of trial. This name reminds us that generosity and kindness are the basis of our origin, that a wealthy uh, God, a, a, a God that is rich in this generosity, rich in this kindness, brought us forth and is to whom we return to. Lastly, this name, as I mentioned, uh, the wealth that is connotated by this name nourishes the generosity in us, uplifts that generosity in us, and puts an end to our tendencies to withhold from that which is around us. So we may have a tendency to, hey, I just accumulated this. I just got this. Whatever it might be, it might be knowledge. It might be a lot of wealth. It might be whatever you consider to be wealth. Whatever it might be, it may just be your able-bodiedness. But we are, we, 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 uh, when, we, when we take in this name, we don't want to withhold that. We want to give it. And we want to give it freely because Allah gives freely. And so this name motivates us to search what is our true wealth. We might not live in the same type of buildings. We might not be in the same tax brackets. We might be in very different spaces, but we do all have a inherent sense of wealth that we can give, even if it's just a smile. And so what are we doing uh, to, to give that, but also why are we withholding it? So it causes us to reflect on this. Lastly, we go into the name Al-Mughni. Al-Mughni is the one who makes rich, the one who is enriching. And this name first and foremost awakens in us that quality of contentedness in the heart because there is uh, true richness that is expressed in contentedness. Um, richness, like I mentioned, can come through material. It can come through uh, the, the wealth of this world in a sense of you know, measurable things, but it also comes through knowledge. It comes through this freedom from being attached to something. And it, it comes through that sense of being content, being satisfied. And uh, the greatest richness in the, is it within us is within the heart of the believer, because the heart of the believer, when purified, is open to these 99 names, is open to so much that the normal eyes, the normal ears, the normal senses could never perceive. They, they live in this world as if they are the wealthiest because they've accessed this. And so when we work on our heart, we really uh, unlock a chamber of treasures that are there. And so it, it begs the question though, that what then is true poverty if the greatest richness is the heart of a believer? True poverty has different connotations in the sense of greed and miserliness. So the one who might be the most wealthy in this world might actually be the most uh, impoverished because they might lack uh, the, the proper satisfaction to combat greed, to combat miserliness. That which never leaves the heart in peace is, is that which brings about true poverty. Never being satisfied to quote Hamilton, uh, tr tr trust in Allah and keeping dignity through contentedness, patience and gratitude help to fill this type of poverty, but acting in a mindful way. So not to dismiss poverty, real poverty that's being faced by people, which is obligatory for people who have means and resources to address. No, not, no mincing of words there, that it's an obligation upon those of us who have to be able to be present for our uh, brothers, sisters, and siblings who do not have. So that, 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 that responsibility is there. We can't just say, hey, Allah will take care of them, so I'm just going to leave them where they're out. No, as we've discussed in all these names, you have an agency and you need to do, you need to do what you can with that. But this name makes us think that, you know, when in, on Allah's scales, again, not on our scales, Allah doesn't say like, okay, hey, race towards uh, Allah law become the most wealthy and the ones who are the most wealthy will be given the rewards um, in the hereafter. No, you know, we might think that, hey, that's the most wealthy person because I can see it. But like I said, with regards to al muqsid the scale is completely different in Allah's sense. And so you could attain the most wealth in this world, but on Allah's sense, you might not be, uh, have, have even gone so much farther than the person who hasn't even earned any of that before. And so we see that poverty on the scale of the divine is something that is very internal. Wealth on the scale of the divine is something that is internal, is that quality, inherent qualities. And so we think about when poverty hits us, it hits each of us, but in what sense? Are we that, do we get that wealthy that we have such a gap of greed, that we have such a, uh, a fuel of that, or do we have no peace in our heart? What, what, are, what is our poverty? And we remind ourselves of that scale of Allah and what Allah is looking at. And so as we conclude with this name, we see that the earth, this place around us is a place where we get to know 
ourselves first and foremost, and we get to know the creation, but through all of, through these both, we get to know the creator. So true enrichment, as I mentioned, is from knowledge, is from wisdom, is from faith. And these are things that are inherent to you. When you internalize them, they can't be taken. Even if someone is to end your, uh, your life, is to end your uh, physical life, these are things that are embedded in you, are inherent to you, and they can't be taken away. And they're the true riches because you, someone can't just steal them from your bank or anything like that. You inherently have them. They might take your sources. They might take the external parts, but the true internal parts can't be touched. And so gratefulness and generosity, trust and patience, essential, uh, essential like regardless, uh, are, these are, are essential regardless of our material external state that we are in. And so al Mughni helps us become free of the torment of greed free of our attachment, and it becomes the channel through which Allah's riches, Allah's wealth flow into the world and flow into us. And so we have a healing energy from this name that helps us see wealth, not as that which might be a certain precious metal or that which might make our bank account go into different numbers or that which we might feel comfortable with uh, because we have more of uh, in a quantifiable sense. Wealth is the one that gives you peace, is the one that takes away greed and miserliness, is the one that leaves you satisfied and is the one that makes you transformed as a better person for the world around you. So inshallah, we, we internalize these names as we conclude out with the uh, the dhikr and the remembrance of these names. So inshallah, let us begin for the sake of time here. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. Al Moxit, 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 Ya Moxit, Ya Moxit, Ya Moxit, Ya Moxit, Ya Moxit. Ya Muqsit, Ya Muqsit, Ya Muqsit. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. Al Jami' 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 Ya Jami' Ya Jami' Ya Jami' Ya Jami' Ya Jami, 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 La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. Al-Ghani, 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 Ya Ghani, 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 Ya Ghani. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. Al Mughni, 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 Al Mughni. Ya Mughni, Ya Mughni, Ya Mughni, Ya 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 Mughni. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. 
So brothers, sisters, everybody, inshallah, whether you're in the space or you're watching us live or you are watching this in the future, take these names. Take these names to know that Allah is the one that provides wealth, is the one that provides a wealth that we can't ever materialize, a wealth that transforms and a wealth which we are accountable for and a wealth that will gather us together and one that we can use together to see that we can improve all that is around us. So be mindful of that wealth. Be mindful of what Allah has given you. Be mindful that we will be gathered. We will be held accountable, but be mindful that uh, it's, it, it doesn't all end there. It's not until one day. We, we are continuously seeing these interactions in our everyday life. So let us be more mindful, inshallah, as we go out. And we'll see you all tomorrow, inshallah, for the 28th session. So three more sessions there. Uh, so inshallah, see you all tomorrow. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.